is up you guys i'll go back to another one if you were new to the channel i am gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we are in the brand new 2023 mercedes-benz glc 300 coupe courtesy of mercedes-benz of hagerstown in hagerstown maryland for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below and so we are in this one today because this is an insanely good looking suv not only that you do get a four-year fifty thousand mile bumper to bumper warranty as well which of course beats the traditional three or 36,000 mile warranty so ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering fuel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so msrp for the glc 300 coupe will start at fifty four thousand seven hundred dollars powering the beast is a two liter turbocharged inline four cylinder putting out 255 horsepower at 5800 rpm 273 pound feet of torque coming in at 1800 rpm power sent to all four wheels this is a formatic all-wheel drive only so that's pretty nice that power sent to the ground through a nine speed automatic with paddle shifters which you guys know we will be testing out here in a little bit but zero to 60 time is going to come in at approximately 6.2 seconds top speed 135 miles per hour with mpg numbers coming in at 21 in the city 27 on the highway taking premium unleaded fuel and so before we do any kind of fun acceleration or paddle shifter test here in the glc 300 coupe what to mention to you guys the drive mode so there's a little toggle switch labeled dynamic it stands for dynamic select when you press that up and down essentially you got eco comfort sport sport plus and individual drive modes adjusting things like the shift points the throttle responses steering sensitivity and the eco start stop system then as well so now having got all of that out of the way what do you guys say Let's go ahead and find a straightaway. Let's put the paddle shifters and acceleration here to the test at the same time. Let's see how quickly the paddle shifters are going to react. And let's see how quickly we can get this thing here up to speed. All right, here we go. So we were in sport driving mode in three, two, one. Go, baby. <laughs> this thing is quick, dude. All right, paddle shifters are actually okay. Not the quickest I've ever felt, but they're not slow either. So... Pedal shifters are all right. Acceleration was great. I definitely like that acceleration. Definitely not going to have any issues emerging onto the highway. Zero to 60 in 6.2 seconds, you guys. In case you didn't know already, it's pretty quick. So definitely not going to have any issues there. That was fine. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. So up front, you will find 13.5 inch ventilated front disc and the back 12.6 inch solid rear disc. As far as that braking fuel goes, since there's nobody behind us here, I love it. That feels good. Yeah, definitely on the firmer side of things, not a soft braking feel, which you sometimes do find in SUVs. So I did want to mention that. So braking feel is perfectly fine for me, at least. The touching on suspension and handling up front, you're going to get an independent four-link front suspension in the back, five-arm multi-link rear design. But not only that, you also do get an adaptive damping suspension. And so that's something that doesn't always come standard, even on luxury manufacturers. So that adaptive damping suspension is nice. Essentially what that is, is it monitors each shock absorber individually, not only adjusting to the road imperfections, giving you a smoother ride, but it's also going to tighten up that suspension during heavy cornering, really giving you the best of both worlds. So of times that will be optional in other luxury manufacturers but very rarely will it come standard unless you're paying like a hundred thousand dollars or something like that so i like that it's standard here on the glc 300 coupe i'm a big fan of that so ultimately when it comes to ride quality i've personally had no issues in my short little test drive here today so that is 100 on point touching on steering feel actually i like it here it's in sport driving mode still and it's definitely weighted on the heavier side of things let me do an experiment here put it back in comfort driving mode it does loosen up but quite honestly even in comfort driving mode the steering feel is still quite brilliant still weighted on the heavier side of things but if you wanted even heavier steering feel that's what you got the sport driving mode for so i love this steering feel on the glc 300 coupe touching on cabin noise i'm going 55 miles per hour right now so i'll let you guys be the judge of that but it's been perfectly fine for me and i do want to mention though there is a noise insulated front glass kind of option that goes for 150 dollars it's essentially an acoustic front windshield so that's going to assist with a little less cabin noise as well so that is pretty cool that touching on visibility i could see eh, 
I don't know. I'm just gonna say I don't know because it's not bad. Honestly, you would probably get used to it. It's not gonna be as good as the GLC 300 without the coupe form because it's just because of its shape, because of its kind of sport back shape in the back, it's not gonna be as good as a traditional SUV's rear visibility would be because you have less of that glass to actually look out of in the back. But like I said, if you ask a Camaro owner, if you ask the 370C owner how the rear visibility is, they're gonna say it's perfectly fine because it's one of those things that you get used to. So for me, I wouldn't have an issue with it because this thing is dang good looking and it's worth the sacrifice in my personal opinion. <laughs> They're touching on full visibility, rain sensing windshield wipers actually do come standard on this thing, which I absolutely love. Essentially what that is, is it's gonna detect any kind of mist or rainfall. It's gonna automatically then turn on those windshield wipers for you. So little convenience feature there. Did wanna also mention though, there is a head up display that is an option that goes for an additional $1,100 if you wanted to go that route. But that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, guys. So they'll go ahead and take Take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2023 Mercedes-Benz GLC 300 Coupe. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2023 Mercedes-Benz GLC 300 Coupe, finished in graphite gray metallic, in case you were curious of our exterior color name that we had on this one today. So let's go ahead and start with where this one is made, because as you guys know, although this is a German company, that doesn't mean necessarily that it is built in Germany, but in the case of the GLC 300 Coupe, it actually is. It starts with the W on the VIN there, so this one is built and assembled in Germany. But now let's go ahead and start up front on this one. Diamond block front grille, in typical Mercedes-Benz fashion that has always looked good and it still does today. Did want to mention there is an additional option being an illuminated star, which actually we do have. It might be hard to tell here in the daylight, but that goes for $500 if you wanted to go that route. That is pretty cool. I've seen that light up at night and it looks dang good. It definitely stands out. So I like it. Anyways, chrome accents on the lower portion of that front bumper, I guess the front lip you could say. So like that front air curtains to the side, helping direct air around the wheel and tire combination, of course. To the sides then, LED headlights with LED daytime running lights do come standard. You do get the automatic feature with that as well, meaning when it starts to get dark at night, those headlights will turn on automatically for you there. And automatic high beams, which were newly standard for last year, the 2022 model, of course, are going to come standard again on the 2023. So. Definitely a very good looking front end. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the side. All right, so but now since we are around to the side of this one, satin chrome window surrounds do come standard. You do have some chrome accents found on the upper portion of those door handles if you get up a little bit closer as well. Rear privacy glass also going to come standard. And then take a look at the side mirrors. They are body colored power adjustable side mirrors. They will be heated with LED integrated turn signals coming standard as well. But not only that, power folding mirrors also coming standard. So gotta love that. Then take a look down at the wheel configuration these are some dang good looking wheels on the glc coupe i gotta admit 19 inch five spoke alloys will come standard but there are plenty of 20 inch wheel designs available including the amg wheel design that we have today so there are a couple amg line packages that give you 20 inch wheels specifically for those amg packages so they definitely look good but anyways pretty much rounds out the side profile gotta love that sport back design but now Let's go ahead and make our way to the back. All right, so but now since we are around to the back of this one, you guys get to see all the way to the top there, there is a very low profile kind of, I guess you can't even call it a shark fin antenna, but antenna. So that is pretty cool. I always like the low profile look. There's kind of an integrated rear spoiler. I'm gonna get up a little bit closer so I can show this to you guys, but it's not really a rear spoiler, but it's kind of integrated. It's got a little lip to it. So I think that looks dang good as well. Got the formatic badging back there indicating that all wheel drive essentially comes standard on this one. LED taillights do come standard across the board as expected at this price range, of course. Just to the bottom, at the very bottom here, you will get a rear diffuser. That looks pretty good as well, but perhaps my little pet peeve for the GLC 300 Coupe is going to be the fake exhaust outlets. And so you have these giant kind of chrome outlets. It looks like they're exhaust outlets, but they're not. Because if you actually get up a little bit closer underneath, you're gonna see that this thing does have dual exhaust outlets, but they're both kind of tucked away towards the ground as opposed to actually pushing them through the exhaust outlets, which you would think would be the case. But anyways, that's my little pet peeve. But as always, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. Here is that exhaust clip.
All right, so but now since we are around to the back of the GLC 300 coupe, when it comes to opening that rear tailgate, it actually is a hands-free power tailgate coming standard on this thing. So simply just walk up behind it with the key fob in your pocket, kick underneath, it's gonna automatically open up for you there. And if you didn't wanna do that, there is a button on the key fob to, again, it's a power tailgate and there is a hidden way if you press in on the upper portion of that Mercedes-Benz logo back there as well, that is yet another way to go ahead and open up the rear tailgate. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 17.6 cubic feet but there are some buttons to fold those rear seats down in the cargo area of course and if you do that that is going to bump that number up to 49.4 cubic feet then there is some cargo lighting back there there's grocery bag hooks there's uh chrome plated tie down anchors as well there's a 12 volt power outlet there is a side cargo net back there a cargo cover and then if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor you're going to find a spare tire in there as well and the, one of the better things about the cargo area is it's all finished in like this nice carpet kind of material as well so you typically will find that in luxury manufacturers like bmw and mercedes so i am a big fan of that so then making our way up to the rear legroom that is going to come in at 37.2 inches so for reference i'm an even six feet tall this is how much space i have back there rear ventilation does come standard there's dual phone charging ports back there as well there actually is a 12 volt power outlet there is a rear center armrest with couple holders and kind of a tablet holder as well which i thought was pretty cool and heated rear seats are available for an additional 500 dollars if you wanted to go that route fun fact on those heated seats last year they were an additional 580 dollars but for 2023 only an additional 500 so anyways then make our way up to the front seats power adjustable front seats with four-way power lumbar coming standard you do get memory settings for up to three different drivers and passengers as well so you don't always find that even on luxury vehicles so the passengers they have three different settings on their side as well so that's pretty cool heated front seats are going to come standard i'm loving them today since it was 22 degrees when i first started filming this video ventilated front seats go for 450 dollars mb tech's upholstery is going to come standard however full leather seating goes for 1620 dollars if you wanted to go that route and overall seating was plenty comfortable one of my favorite parts about the seating though is the side bolsters are pretty thick they definitely come out a good bit so when i was going around the turns on those back roads back there it definitely felt like it was holding me in place pretty darn well so i'm a big fan of that so if you wanted to have a little more spirited driving on the back roads you can do that with the glc 300 coupe because of the side bolster so big fan but anyways then take a look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping it is power adjustable liked that leather wrapped as well and if you wanted the heated steering wheel that adds an additional 250 dollars but that is available for you then but so then make your way to the startup all of your buttons are located on one side of the key here you got lock unlock and of course that button to pop the rear tailgate there but it is all keyless entry with a push button start so all i'm going to do is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button which actually is a pretty cool design to it kind of by the driver's right knee there so I'm also a fan of that. Good attention to detail, Mercedes. But then, once started up, analog gauges do come standard on this thing, but there's a 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster that goes for $750 if you wanted to go that route. And that is uh, completely customizable. And so, essentially, if you press the home button on the steering wheel itself and you go all the way over to the right, you have the option for designs. When you hit designs, you got sport, classic, and progressive. So, that completely changes the look of the gauges up there. So, I did want to mention that because that is one of the coolest things about digital gauges. It can be completely customized. And of course you have your outside temperature indicator up there. You have how many miles you have left until you hit empty. There's the time of day, list goes on. Pretty much everything you could possibly want on the gauges up front there. Then making our way to overall interior quality, there is a power sunroof that does come standard 100% love that. You typically don't find standard sunroofs or moonroofs these days, so I like that. Also, there is an overhead sunglass holder up top there as well. Auto dimming rear view mirror with garage door openers for up to three different garage doors, and that's going to be a frameless mirror as well, so I like that. Dual zoom climate control does come standard. 64 colors of ambient lighting as well. Our Mercedes Benz definitely does ambient lighting very well. Wireless phone charger goes for $200 if you wanted to go that route. And there's plenty of different wood trims available, although we kind Kind of have this aluminum trim accenting going on in our particular configuration here today found on the doors just behind the infotainment screen as well but there is a lot of contrast stitching so i did like that 
just in front of the touchpad controller that is where the wireless phone charger is located there's also a uh, phone charging port up there there's a couple cup holders and then the center armrest you got a couple more phone charging ports actually and a decent amount of storage in there and uh we actually do have the uh matte wood finishes and i like how the matte wood finish is kind of texturized as well it's finished in black here kind of surrounding everything in the middle so i do like that and overall honestly interior quality is 100 percent on point so definitely didn't have any issues there but now let's go ahead and take a look at the infotainment screen 10 and a quarter inch color touchscreen display is going to come standard so yes it is touchscreen there is also that touchpad controller and buttons i just mentioned to you guys behind the cup holders and there's also the availability for you to say hey mercedes how may i help you turn on the radio and there you go it literally listens to everything you say it will do whatever you ask it to do i'm just saying but anyways bluetooth and audio streaming of course do come standard android auto apple carplay as well factory navigation system also coming standard you can check out your driving statistics up there if you wanted to and there's a bunch of themes as well and this is another one of my favorite parts if you kind of swipe up from the bottom you're going to get a bunch of themes like trip experience efficiency lounge and standard it completely changes the look of everything in the actual vehicle so it's going to change things like the ambient lighting settings so if you put it in kind of the sportier mode it's going to kind of give you like this orange ambient lighting it's going to give you all your driving statistics on the infotainment screen it's also going to change the gauge readout to the sport kind of look so it changes a lot about the actual vehicle itself when you change those themes so i do like that feature i'm a pretty big fan but also of course you can check out your radio information up there and so standard sound system will be six speakers but there is an optional 13 speaker Burmester sound system that one goes for $850 and that is not the one we have today unfortunately but that one does come with 590 watts but we do have the six speaker sound system with us here today so what do you guys say let's go ahead and turn on the radio see what we got playing today and let's test out the clarity of this one <laughs> Actually, not that bad the clarity was pretty darn good bass was okay as well yeah, when it comes to six speaker sound systems it's definitely one of the better ones that I've heard in a while so I don't mind the six speaker obviously if you're into music go with the Burmester and honestly $850 for that kind of a sound system that's a good bit of bang for your buck but I don't mind the six speaker I'd probably go Burmester but anyways last thing I want to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the GLC 300 coupe in reverse you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board but you will also get a surround view monitor coming standard as well which is going to give you that bird's eye aerial view which is always it's going to lead us into safety and so to start front side side curtain airbags do come standard driver's knee airbag up front as well in the back you're going to have latch aka lower anchors tethers to children for the rear car seats rear child door locks high pressure monitoring system but also coming standard Standard, active brake assist, Mercedes Men's Emergency Call Service, blind spot assist with exit warning, cross wind assist, parktronic with active parking assist, and rear cross traffic alert then as well. Did want to mention one more thing when it comes to safety. There is a driver assistance package that goes for $1,700. That gives you adaptive cruise control, active steering assist, evasive steering assist, and a couple other things then as well. So overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here, great looking vehicle. I definitely love the styling of the coupe form in SUV kind of fashion. I don't know how else to put it. Excellent ambient lighting as always. Mercedes-Benz always crushes it with that. Digital gauges are wonderful. I love how you can completely adjust the look up there. Great driving dynamics as expected expected zero to 60 is 6.2 is great the braking feel is great the steering feel is wonderful as well especially in that sport driving mode as far as room for improvement goes rear visibility obviously isn't going to be the best with this particular shape i think it's personally worth it though because of the shape it makes it look so much better but again it's not going to be as good as its traditional suv counterparts and the other thing i think that last safety package should really come standard on this thing because most other manufacturers even non-luxury manufacturers are giving you standard adaptive cruise control and evasive steering assist things like that so that's my other constructive criticism but anyways let me know what you guys think of the glc 300 coupe in the comments section below and that is about it for this one you guys thank you so much for watching feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to youtube be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're in your new car reviews that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i will see you guys all in the next video Stay gold.